Okay, mm, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, 14 hours Indian Standard Time. Uh, it's 2 p.m. in in in, uh, in Delhi. Mm, welcome back to the post lunch session of Startup Fungi Online Lecture Series organized by Association of Fungi Biologists. Uh, India Micro Asia Journal of Modern Mycology, Micro India Journal of Indian Fungi, and Center for Biodiversity Exploration and Conservation. I'm Bilishanai, um, managing editor of Micro Asia Journal of Modern Mycology. Um, in the morning session, we had wonderful, wonderful talks. First was by Professor Kandikeri Ramaya Sridhar, who talked about the role of mushrooms in nutrition and health. And the second talk was by Mr. Aditya Shin was from Roha Biotech, shared his story about Roha Biotech as a co-founder of it. Third interesting talk was by Dr. Rashiswini Balaraju, co-founder and chief product officer of Microvision India and Singapore. Uh, she was very energetic and she gave lots of information and insights about as a, as a co-founder uh, as a, as a co of Microvision. The last talk in the morning session was by Dr. Pooja Dube Pandey, the founder of BT Innovative Private Limited, based in um, uh, based in um, uh, Indore, which is in Madhya Pradesh, state of India. Uh, that talk was quite inspirational, I, I, say, I must say. Uh, in the afternoon session, we'll have uh, five more talks. Uh, first one would be by Mr. Sharad Rai. I would call him the guru of. Uh, Micromaterials Research in India. He was the former CTO of uh, Dharaksha Eco Solutions. Next uh, talk will be by Ms. Susan from Norway, who will talk about uh, the future of future is fungi. Uh, she is joining from Norway at uh, 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. That would be at 10:30 p.m. in Norway. Uh, 10:30 a.m. in Norway. Um, then the and then we are going to have a very interesting talk by Mr. Jashid Hamid, who is the co-founder of Novedo Bangalore, who is going to talk about marketing, how to market uh, mushrooms in a, in, a, in a mycophobic market. Um, um, yeah, I mean, um, co-founders of Novedo, Jashid and Prathvi, we are on the star, uh, you know, we're, we're on, we're on the Shark Tank, Shark, Shark Tank India, Shark Tank India show recently. And uh, I, we must uh, be looking forward to this presentation by Jashid. The last button presentation will be by Indian energetic Adam Samshuti, brother of the fun guy. He is basically a computer scientist. He's an expert in AI, but he is into mushroom business. The last talk is very interesting. It will be very interesting by Kishot Navaratna Raja from Sri Lanka. He will be talking about this project, Dream Fungi project. And he says that it's the first ever open biolab research in Sri Lanka. So let's first uh, move on with the, our first presentation after after our lunch break. I request Rohit Sharma, the managing editor of uh, Micro India Journal of Indian Fungi, to introduce uh, Mr. Sharad Rai uh, to the today's audience. Dr. Rohit Sharma, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shinoy. Uh, so our next speaker is Mr. Sharad Rai. Uh, Sharad is a multidisciplinary citizen scientist and a researcher with a strong focus on biofabrication using fungi. Uh, he has worked with uh, various startups in microfabrication sector in India. He has helped scale up production of micro-materials from lab to industry scale for startups like uh, Daraksha Private Limited and Microtrix Private Limited. He is also from former chief technical officer of uh, the Raksha Private Limited, and he has also maintained a private type culture bank with over 120 species of fungi, both native and exotic origins. He is also an avid mushroom farmer in his free time and likes to grow his own food. Uh, very uh, unique uh, activities, uh, Sharad. Welcome, Sharad. Hi. I think. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. The floor is all yours. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So. Um, a lot of talks already on biomaterials. I think Ruha Biotech touched uh, upon bio, biomaterial as an industry. And then Beatty also. My talk is going to be slightly away from uh, the optimism around uh, microfabrication. Uh, with uh, having an experience of uh, 
helping two companies go from lab to industrial scale i've seen a lot of real world problems issues that have come up and i've also had other companies uh, you know come to me and uh, who want to enter into micro material space so this presentation is going to address some of the uh, you know questions over the industry so i'm just going to start off in my presentation i'm just going to present my screen now Yeah, so I hope my screen is uh, visible to everybody. Yes, yes, yes. it's so clearly visible. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So the topic of my presentation today is uh, where are all the micromaterials? So it's uh, it's been a long time since Ecovative uh, was founded in year 2007. This is year 2024. And uh, we are yet to see a lot of uh, materials being packaged in fungi-based uh, packaging or fungi-based materials. So this presentation is going to explore the economics of this industry and why we are not seeing a lot of uh, micro-materials replace uh, styrofoam-based material for packaging, specifically for packaging uh, and not other uses. I'm going to focus specifically on packaging because that seems to be a, where a lot of attention uh, is coming into from people who want to invest, people who want to start a business, people who want to even research their uh, core focus is uh, micro materials as uh, packaging materials. So we're going to ask some question and see uh, where we are where the domestic industry is where is it where is it globally and what happened to all the promises that were made to us so uh, in 2007 design set a stage for a new era with micro materials and since then about 500 companies globally and 10 to 15 companies in india uh do teen to today in our presentation are delving into this uh, space of micro material but uh, a question that needs to be asked is are any of these uh, endeavors truly profitable because at the end of the day uh, you know a startup needs to make money needs to pay its bills needs to make a profit uh, needs to return uh, the investment from its investors. So it's important to look at it from the economics point of view. Now, a good question to ask is, hi, have any of you ever received a product that was encased in a fungi based packaging? Just raise your hands uh, if you have. I, so no raised hand means nobody has ever received anything packaged in fungi. I would assume that's the case. Oh, okay. One, one person. Okay. We, we're going to talk about your experience with the packaging later. Hold that thought, uh, Mr. Kirk. Uh, okay. So wh why is this happening? Why, uh, if you, if you ask chat GPT or Google, what is the best replacement, best sustainable replacement for styrofoam? Chances are it's going to give you an answer on the lines of myco materials or mushroom packaging but if they are the top replaceable uh, sustainable material for styrofoam then why aren't we seeing it in the market more why aren't our top brands using myco material for packaging right 
uh so we're going to talk about why why is this happening is the challenge on the scaling up side is it that the companies are not able to scale up to beyond a th certain threshold for it to be visible in the market or be you know readily adapt uh, adopted by companies or is the crux of the matter in the economics of thing is it too expensive uh, what's 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 the issue uh, you know it's been more than 15 years and uh, it's time we ask this question like why where are we with micro materials and where are we going to go with micro materials so uh, as this landscape evolves a uh, critical inquiry needs to be made into feasibility scalability and economic viability of these materials and these questions need to be asked by consumers by investors who are investing in this sector and by entrepreneurs who are uh, going to enter uh, this space uh, it's important for them to address this because uh, to understand where this industry is going we need to understand where we are and where how we arrived here <clears throat> so yeah so one thing i've observed in my 6 uh, plus years in biofabrication consulting uh, other researchers consulting other firms is that a lot of people have this look west kind of mindset which means look at the companies in the west and how well are they doing like look at ecovative look at microworks or look at uh, you know any look at biome uh, we can just take their model and we can apply that model and start bio manufacturing here what they don't understand is the intricacies that go into any bio manufacturing not just uh, fungal bio materials uh they feel like this model works there and maybe we can just you know cut copy paste and it should fly here is pe bahut sare there are tiny tiny loopholes that people uh tend to uh, ignore and this not just on the entrepreneur side uh, even when while fundraising investors actually push entrepreneurs to you know adapt uh, ecovative model that oh you to apne you know you you've done this in lab uh, now let's just scale up and uh, start uh, producing micro materials and packaging for big big brands and big companies so there is a push from both side from the investor side and the entrepreneur side to sort of look west look at what the companies in the west are doing and try to just replicate that model here what they tend to ignore is that ecovative even though they call themselves as a biotech company and they are a biotech company what they're not is a manufacturing company what that means is that most of their revenue in the past 15 years has come from licensing activities technology licensing activities to other firms rather than direct bio manufacturing so i think ecovative did about 3 million dollars of revenue last year and uh, their lifetime revenue is somewhere around 65 70 million on a fund base that they have raised of about what 20 million so prima facie a they are not very profitable b they haven't given any return to their investors c theirs is not a bio manufacturing model theirs is more of a r&d model get a uh, you know get a get sops in place for a minimal viable scale of production and then start licensing those to other firms who want to get into it i i, I mean i would hate to use that but it's sort of becoming like a pyramid scheme uh, where you know nobody is actually making profit but everybody is saying that oh you know you why don't you set up a factory for this and it's the emerging material and it's it's going to replace styrofoam one day and here is a license why don't you go ahead and just uh, implement our this thing our our licensing and start manufacturing it and start catering to uh, firms in your region which uh, need sustainable packaging or replacement for styrofoam 
तो दिस इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम नाउ इट इट वुड हैव बीन फाइन इफ यू कुड हैव जस्ट कट कॉपीड वन मॉडल एंड अप्लाइड इट हियर एंड इट वुड वर्क अनफॉर्चूनेटली दैट्स नॉट हाउ इट वर्क्स यू आर मोस्ट कंपनीज एट दिस स्टेज नाउ in india are not very rnd driven companies they are mostly uh, uh they they scale their process to a certain level at lab and then immediately want to scale up and go go up to industrial level production so that's a pitfall uh, uh, most some of the processes that you will try to scale up uh, that you'll try to do in the lab when you try to scale them up for a industrial scale they just aren't Uh, those equipments or tools available for scaling up so for instance while you can make 20 liters of liquid culture in a small glass bioreactor in your lab when you want to make 2000 liters of liquid culture you're going to have to make your own bioreactor there just aren't any cost effective uh, bioreactors available for that scale of uh, processing of your liquid culture that's just an example but regardless of whether you're using liquid culture or you're using spawn grain spawn or sawdust substrate whatever you're using uh, when you scaling up to a industrial level you will find that for a lot of uh, scaling up uh, processes and sops you will need oem okay. Your original equipment manufacturers, which are going to sit with your design team, understand your design requirements under your understand your requirements, and then design equipments uh, to your need. Now this can go either ways. That equipment can work. That equipment can fail. Also, this is where you know you just have to incur those losses uh, during R and D. unfortunately most people don't take this burn into account they they just assume i have oh, i've made uh, you know i've stumped some substrate in a sterilized plastic box i've let it grow for a few days demolded it and dried it and now i have a great uh, uh, business idea and a product that i can uh, sell to companies but it 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 seems to be a pipe dream rather than an actual reality because when you consider these issues with scaling up uh, it becomes a very challenging task to actually achieve any reasonable amount of dent on uh, styrofoam uh, packaging to <laughs> but core challenges kya hai let's see ki aap ya main ya koi aur anybody is starting a, a manufacturing of uh, mushroom based packaging material right what are the problem so one problem i have just told you is logistics right when you are doing something at a lab scale you are dealing with maybe 100 kgs of agricultural waste whatever you are using rice straw wheat straw hemp bagas whatever your substrate formulation or combination is you can store 100 kgs of it easily and use it for your small sampling and uh, it's and that's going to work out but when you're talking about industrial scale production we're talking about mil- million metric tons of uh, produce in annually so and one big problem with mycelium packaging it's it's a one to one conversion which means 1 kg of agricultural raw material dry agricultural raw material is going to yield you 1 kg of your myco material so say your say you have to now uh, cater an order for a big company like adidas or nike who want their shoes to be somehow packed in uh, this thing they produce million units right they they produce like a million units of those shoes now they want you to fulfill the demand for a million boxes of uh, packaging with now to make those million boxes you need the raw material for million boxes also right this is where uh, styrofoam has a lot of advantage styrofoam is essentially 97% air so while the raw material is only 3% the uh, side the volume they can just expand it using 97% air so raw material uh, becomes a big challenge collecting it from farmers is a big challenge india 
lacks the resources we don't have enough balers harvesters to actually pick up this waste from the farm collect it sort it uh, you know bale it and then uh, transport it to a processing center so it's a logistical nightmare also and again because we don't have infrastructure there's also technological hurdles on how you're going to collect this waste how you're going to bale this how you're going to transport and where you're going to store it right storing is also a big issue now say you say you're working on a raw material like wheat waste or raw waste uh, rice uh, rice stubble uh, now these these are produced in the farms during certain times of the year time of the year right so for instance your rice would start getting harvested somewhere in september october and then the next sowing cycle for rice is next year and then you're going to get another uh, crop so for 6 months you have to plan how you're going to procure this dry it because when when it's cut it's not exactly dry and that's no good because you need it to dry for it to lose the water for you to transport it here otherwise you're going to be paying money for the uh, moisture content in your raw material you don't want to pay for uh, transporting water in your raw material so the on site drying of this raw material then baling then packaging them to ensure ki ras if on the way if it starts raining or something it shouldn't reabsorb water and then coming and storing it huge logistical nightmare and huge technological challenge right now next thing is ensuring consistent quality and meeting the demand at large scale can be challenging so what that means is ki boss you you go to you know one of the big brands you uh, you say you go to himalaya or dabar and you say boss will package your uh, your capsules in our in our instead of pl- plastic packaging will package it in our uh, this thing therm uh, micro thermocol or micro material and they are like okay great show me some samples and you bring five or 10 samples of the same consistency and they are happy with it they tell you fine we'll give you order for you know 50000 1 lakh unit and now you go back and when you start replicating your process because this is a biological process and even in controlled environment there are microclimates in microclimatic zones in your production or uh, biofabrication area where you are giving this uh, ideal uh, condition for the mycelium to vegetate and uh, colonize the entire substrate so b- because there are these tiny changes between micro micro environment zones in your uh, manufacturing facility there will be some some difference in texture color uh, or just general uh, you know fluffiness because uh, at the end of the day this is a biological process and you won't get the exact replica like you do in plastic in plastic if you want to produce uh you know one type of design you can exactly replicate that n number of times without any variation but when it comes to biological processes uh it's very hard to uh, control it and maintain the consistency in quality um, in uh, quality in you know in your packaging uh, design and material when you're going large scale another thing is awareness so uh, while everybody is uh, you know uh, aware that styrofoam is very bad for the environment and it doesn't get recycled and blah 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 there is very little awareness on what the uh, alternate material should look and feel like which means uh, people have unreasonable expectations uh, about how uh, a natural substitute should feel and uh, touch feel and touch smell uh, appearance all these things so they they still have expectations of uh, consistency of material like thermocol or styrofoam so that's 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 another thing that uh, the market lacks that on the client side there is not a lot of awareness on what mushroom uh, packaging looks like
or feels like or uh, appears to be in their product so that that is a main uh, again main issue of awareness on the client side and the customer side and uh, cost consideration another another cost another factor is that when you are uh, scaling up uh, this thing your costs are also going up and they go up exponentially in some cases <coughs> so uh conventionally what we have seen is that it's about you know even if you try your best it's about 1.5 to 2 times more expensive than styrofoam and even at this i'm telling you your gross margin and net margins are almost zero but uh, assume that's also not too much because uh, at least from client side what uh, we have observed working with different clients is that Uh, they are okay with the higher price, uh, especially when it comes to high ticket uh, goods like your electronics, laptops, your uh, you know any any slightly more expensive equipment. They don't mind paying the extra for the packaging, but at the same time they want some industry standards. Now these industry standard certifications are not available right away. so in a lot of cases what is happening is that they they like your packaging everything is going fine but they would then they would like some certification for the material that you might not have so for instance uh, electrostatic resistance uh, things like these so the these as a young company you may not be aware you may not have all these certifications so that this is also a important consideration when you are uh, Uh, talking about the barriers in uh, adapt uh, adaptation of micro materials so obviously cost is uh, higher so there is some skepticism there although i won't say this is the primary uh, pain point of the industry <laughs> another thing is infrastructure requirement a lot of people don't like i gave an example on uh, you know the infrastructure that you need from to scale from lab uh, scale processes to industrial level processes those equipment those tools those machines are simply not there because it's a novel industry so since it's a novel industry nobody is scaled it up then therefore there are no equipments also available for scaling up for instance you need to mix substrates say for instance you have got a large order and you need to produce you need to make say uh, 100 kgs of packaging material today so uh, for 100 kgs of packaging material you need 1000 kgs of your wet substrate because 90 uh, 90% of it would be water that you've added to the substrate now when you want 100 kgs you need to Uh, remove that water to get it to 100 kg so you need to start with 1000 kg of wet substrate uh, colonized substrate now when you are mixing these uh, you need uh, equipment like ribbon mixers or sterile sterile uh, uh, ribbon mixer which will mix these in sterile sterility uh, or uh, you need uh, machines that uh, basically when you are uh, once you are done you know breaking your substrate and filling it in mold you need some kind of method to fill these otherwise uh, otherwise this you know uh, you need to do it manually right now this stuffing in mold and then demolding so it's a law it's very labor uh, labor intensive process also you need somebody to mold it you need somebody to demold it and then in demolding it, it could you know the material could break uh, so there's a lot of wastage there also so so one of the biggest barriers is that equipment and infrastructure is simply not there you will have to uh, you will have to find and design a lot of your yourself and work with oems who can deliver equipments according to your specific requirement supply chain limitation is there like i mentioned that uh, your rice ka season or your wheat season it it varies 
north uh, the season is different south india season is different so supply chain limitations are there because it's a one to one conversion which means 1 kg of dry raw material will be will result in 1 kg of material which means you have to have a very big storage facility also if you want uh, to stock up for say 6 uh, months you will at least uh, say even for a medium or small scale production you will need 5 to 10 uh, tons of uh, material which means you need to store it which means you need to have equipment to transport this from your storage area to your processing area so uh, so there are a lot of supply chain limitations also right this problem is not with styrofoam styrofoam the raw material is plastic beads small plastic bead 1 kg of uh, plastic bead can result in about 50000 metric square feet of uh, styrofoam so so their raw material storage is not a problem here raw material storage is a big problem not only do you have to store that raw material you have to move it around on a regular basis and you have to also keep it in a climate controlled uh, environment because you don't want your raw material to start decomposing in your storage area by some other fungi instead of the fungi that you want to grow uh, this on uh market perception is also there despite its eco friendly credentials uh, some uh, consumers and clients perceive uh, fungi based or mushroom based packaging as unconventional and less durable to traditional materials overcoming this uh, perception barrier is crucial for wide strap uh, adoption up now the issue is say you are you are working with some some food guy food manufacturer and there product is uh, labeled for uh, shelf life of 12 months right now if they want to package something that is going to last 12 months they will also need the packaging to last 12 months right so now you need to ensure that your material which is biodegradable uh, which is meant to break down should not break down before the end life of the product which means uh, the expectations of the client are that even though i am buying a sustainable solution it should behave like plastic it should you know continue to be uh, uh, weather proof temperature proof uh, wear and tear proof so these are some of the issues that uh, are are coming uh, in the way of wide spread adoption for micro material another issue is your competition from established sustainable material we've gone to people and they they've said boss what is the need for mushroom material we can use corrugated boxes or we can use paper there are now these honeycomb uh, design stretchable papers that that can uh, that take uh, shock and absorb shock very well Uh, there so so market may there are sustainable solutions available which are more traditional which uh, you know which are also cheaper when it comes to micro material so lot of you know and if somebody wants to go package their material they can go buy these things in the uh, market but when it comes to mushroom based packaging the client first has to come to me then i will sit with him my design team will sit with him we will take the measurement of the product then that measurement will go to our molding team they will make molds those molds will then be used to make uh, plastic molds which will be further stuffed with substrate then lot of prototyping work happens lot of cost is incurred into this mold making so the the overall peak time period uh, for a client to go from idea to a finished packaging is about 3 to 4 months which is very 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 long compared to some of the other traditional sustainable uh, materials available 
तो वॉट डज इट मीन इज इट ऑल डूम एंड ग्लूम शुड पीपल पैक अप एंड क्लोज देयर फैक्ट्रीज एंड माई जस्ट यू नो कंसिडर इट एज अ फैट दैट केम फॉर फिफ्टीन ईयर्स एंड देन वेल्ट अवे वेल इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट टू आस्क whether it's economically viable in today's time to do it maybe it's an idea that's ahead of its time maybe the market's not re- ready maybe you know maybe uh, maybe there there are some miraculous solution or some solutions that can overcome these gaps through r&d or something else right what i suggest however is if you are going into uh, bio material taking this challenge on want to become an entrepreneur and work in bio materials only then make a multidisciplinary team don't just take biologist or microbiologist or you know one kind of people because you'll need ele- you'll need electrical engineers electronic engineers mechanical engineers uh, like i said bahut sari you know a lot of machines are not there so you'll have to sit down with your team you'll have to sit down with uh, uh, you know the microbiologist needs to sit down with the mechanical engineer the mechanical engineer needs to sit down with the electrical engineer and all of them need to come together to make solutions for an industry where these solutions don't currently exist like i said uh, you know if uh, people who are already in this industry i don't know if they are still available in this chat but they can uh, testify that uh, you know mixing the substrate or mixing your lc or you know making your liquid culture or spawn or uh, molding and demolding these are all uh, areas where we need technological solutions but currently there are none there are companies who are working like darak shoes uh, who are trying to make their own oem equipment to solve these problems but i don't see a lot of other uh, companies uh, doing it and and that's a risk uh, you know even if you try to develop machines on your own maybe they work out maybe they don't you end up burning some cash there another advice is go slow a lot of like i said lab based processes and sops can't be replicated when scaling up to industrial level using current technology so go slow don't 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 think about becoming a millionaire or a billionaire just to borrow learn to make micro materials from lab in a lab chill out every mushroom farmer has known how to make micro materials since uh, god knows when uh, they just I haven't been able to find a right application or make a product out of it and address it to a market, which, by the way, is still not happening. I mean, <clears throat> and while we're at it, look at other applications and markets. Don't just be tunnel vision or bird-eyed and you know keep uh, hammering over the same thing. Can I? I so I'll go into packaging. I'll only make packaging and I'll you know figure it out. some you know some some problems can't be uh, solved so let those be explore other alternatives as well but uh, as always i uh, you know i welcome more heads to the field uh, be more aware don't don't be sold on a pipe dream that wow so many startups are doing this i will also do this or let's we should also get into micro materials there's there's other micro materials also micro leather micro foam micro bacon food based uh, uh, you know uh, on all on fungi so all these applications are there the, i we could maybe one day do other presentations debunking and uh, you know uh, finding out where these alternate applications are technology wise so yeah that was my presentation i am open for questions thank you very much for your time and i'm sorry for you know ruining the day for a lot of micropreneurs who were thinking that uh, you know 
they're the next millionaires, billionaires. There's there's a lot of work to be done. Oh, thank you, Sharad. Can you just stop presenting? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that was a fantastic presentation. I mean, as expected from you, as I recognize you as the guru of my committee of in India. Um, we will questions maybe for next 15 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll be happy to take questions. Yeah. Thanks for uh, finishing in just 35 minutes. We will have some 15 minutes for you know discussion. Mohan Kumar, please ask a question. Uh, Sharad, that, that was a great insight because most of the uh, people who wants to work with micro material, uh, they won't think about the challenges which face basically or basically on the production or getting resources and all of that. I have come across one company which is in Pune, Pune-based company called Craste. So this particular company is also working with uh, production of micro material, but it is not based on the mycology something which is in, but they are producing a material, a packaging material using uh, something called, uh, 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 again, agro waste substrates. When they can get so much of resources, they can get so much of agro waste substrates uh, because they are getting their resourcing from most of them from uh, northern part of uh, India. And where is the lacuna in getting for us? So why can't we, you know, resource such as uh, such type of uh, uh, materials uh, or agro waste substrates from them? See, I I'm I'm not I'm not aware about this company and exactly uh, what your uh, what the what their product is. But from what I understand is they're also growing something on agri waste uh, product agri waste uh, stream, right? Now, if you it doesn't matter what you grow, most likely you're you're going to use some kind of organism that's going to act as a binder for that agri waste. So regardless of, uh, you know, uh, which organism you use, you're going to face these logistical issues regarding the waste stream. So transport of the material from North India to South India, the carbon emission on the transport, then you would want it to be dry, right? So when you're harvested your rice or wheat or sunflower or take whatever agricultural waste you want you also want it to be dried first so that that on-site processing is something that you need to worry about because farmer is not going to think about ki my agri waste is going to be used by xyz company so let me process it for them so you will also you'll have to do a lot of on-site processing uh, for your raw material itself, like baling machine. So, for instance, we work with wheat, hemp, uh, rice, uh, sunflower hull. For all these, the farmer says, Ki, boss, take my field. You send your machine. Yes. Micro packaging material. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I... Madam Pooja, please mute yourself. Yeah. Madam Pooja. Uh... Madam Pooja, mute yourself. You are disturbing the discussion. Sorry, Mr. Please go ahead. Yeah. So primarily the farmer says, boss, I have my agri waste. You take it for free of cost. You take it. But you send the machine, you, you bail it, you transport it. I am not paying a single penny. So right now you need to work with aggregators, people who have Bailing machine. Give a pen. Give a pen. Give a pen. Give a pen. Give a so I, I I I hope I've answered your question. I'm not sure what product they're making, so I can't comment on their technology. But, so their product is that's a uh, using agro waste substrate. What they are doing, the, they are giving some incentives to the farmer after once they procure a material from them. So these incentives will encourage the farmers to give lot of. Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, substrates, uh, and maybe you know, in, uh, accumulation of few uh, farmers uh, uh, in the particular area, probably our job will be done. So that no need, no need to oh, yes, bring it absolutely. here and do See, that. Yeah, like I said, like I said, farmers don't even want an incentive. They want they want somebody to just clear their field. Their option is either I'll do it myself by burning it, or you send your people, uh, cut it up, bale it up, take it from here. I don't know. I I have to sow my next crop. Their their main headache is their dhanda, their business, which is that I need to sow my wheat crop. Or if it's your uh, rice season, they need to grow, uh, sow the wheat crop. If it's the wheat crop, they need to sow the rice crop. That's how the circle. Uh, the cropping circle goes so they want their their land to be free up freed up as soon as possible right now you can of course incentivize uh, the farmer but that incentive you will pay from your pocket right and unless you are making money from somewhere how will you pay it forward to the farmer I, I invite Dr. Mohan Kumar to the Microasia International WhatsApp group and where Sharad is our star, he will discuss this further. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, please. Yes. We have to answer any questions. Uh, Madam Chaitra, please ask your question. Uh, thank you, sir. It was good to get more knowledge on mycomaterial. So, in biological process, as you mentioned, what are the particular steps involved in maintaining good quality of final product output? Uh, so, I tell you entire process the entire process is first you get your material right okay so your yeah. raw material is one it has to be dried right yeah. yes. so now you brought it you have say it's in the baler form you'll store it in some 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 facility some store space where you're going to store your raw material yes you take the raw material then you hydrate it because okay. the fungi fungi will not grow on dry material you need to yeah. hydrate yeah. it right Yes. Then the next step comes either pasteurization of the material or sterilization of the substrate. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, so you go for either autoclaving it or if you have steam-based uh, pasteurization tunnels like some button mushroom farmers have, you can give your material to them. They will pasteurize it for you and give it back to you. Or you can do it on site. Whatever you do, that's, that's your basically sterilization, pasteurization. Yeah. Once that is done, this is done in bags. Yeah. Again, so a dichotomy which I have discussed in this work is that to replace plastic, you actually have to use a lot of plastic yeah. in, this, in, in bio manufacturing. Uh, so uh, now once it's sterilized, you have two options. You can either inoculate using uh, substrate as a spawn, which means you can prepare sawdust or whatever this thing in bags, you can spawn it and at 10%, 15%, you can spawn it. Uh, you can use, I discourage people using grain spawn because grain spawn, number one, the it, it, uh, you know, it uh, destroys the consistency of the material. Because if you notice every agricultural waste will be stringy and uh, thin yeah. and they are then binded by the mushroom but in between if you have wrong cur round kernels of say corn or wheat or your normal rye, sorghum, your normal uh, grain spawn grains if you noticed it the fungi tends to enter the grain consume the inside of the grain and leave the shells right because yeah. Because because these sh shells are made out of, uh, I believe, uh, lig lignocellulistic material, lig primarily lignans, which aren't exactly the fav favorite diet for the fungi. So, you grain spawn mein notice grain when once the mush, if you you know if you have a wasted grain spawn lying six months, seven months purana, you notice it that the grain the fungi actually. Uh, inserts the hypha in, into the grain, yes. inside the grain, and consumes the uh, sugary carbohydrates that's that's inside the grain. What this does is this uh, compromises the strength of the material. Now that grain is hollow, 
so as soon as any weight is pressed on the material no that grain is the point of failure for the material so i don't encourage using grain spawn but you can use grain spawn if you are making for home or some uh, non commercial purpose okay the other method is using your liquid culture you you make your liquid culture in your 2 uh, liter 1 liter 500 ml jars and you hmm. use a serial serial uh, inoculator or injector to continuously uh, just take one bag put 10 ml of spawn in there move it put the next one move it so that's how so once your substrate is colon then you uh, inoculate it then you leave it to uh, uh, for colonization which is where the the inoculated fungal will start growing out and bind the substrate this is what we call primary colonization Okay. during primary colonization we basically break the bags at 50% and at 75% and we let it run then they are finally consolidated what happens is that when you break bags in between these networks break down and then they reform then break down again then they reform so they add to the strength in overall uh, 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 com- strength of the hyphal network because they keep breaking down and then reforming and then breaking down and reforming new and new networks overlap and then that gives more strength now up now your bag is ready it's colonized what you need to do is take your mold whatever shape you want to make you want to make packaging material you want to make this uh, dia type material this dia or you want to make uh, you know a teddy bear something like this or you want to make coasters something like this for your coffee table something like that or you want to make some you know a drink holder like coffee cup uh, you get at starbucks to transport your coffee you can make whatever you want so you need a plastic mold for it mm-hmm. right? yeah. plastic mold needs to be sterilized or aseptically treated so that there is no contamination yeah. there now we break the bag Uh, apart we take the substrate i do this in sterile environment i was listening to roha biotech i believe they have uh, they were saying they have hybridized strains and they can uh, work in non sterile environment i would love to a uh, witness it b uh, do it myself and see if it works i have been working with fungi for over uh, Uh, 12 years now about and i haven't uh, ever been able to successfully do it uh, in uh, non sterile environment so i still uh, do the inoculation in the sterile environment and do the molding and de- molding in the sterile environment again right so now you have the mold you have your bag you open the bag you break the substrate using your gloves you fill it up in the mold and you press it right and yeah, yeah. close your mold using either a polyfill sheet or a piece of your mold if you have designed your mold then you will have a cap also for it yeah that cap needs to have some uh, gap for filters you can use your standard uh, 0.2 micron uh, syringe filters as gas exchange because now uh, this is called the secondary growing process for primary growth was happening in the bag yeah of the bag then then we then we take it stuff it in the uh, the mold and then once it's grown in the mold we demold it and send it forward for dehydration dehydration up uh, 80 se 75 90 pe aap 6 se 8 9 ghante depending on how thick your material is if it's really thin 3 4 ghante mein sukh jayega but if it's like thick like this it may take up to 6 7 8 hours depending on what temperature you are doing so this is mota moti the entire cycle iske okay. baad there are lot of treatments post uh, post drying there are treatments to extend la- shelf life like i said ki uh, iski shelf life to 6 mahine hai but jo product ko package karna hai isme uski 12 mahine so now i have to extend its shelf life to basically match the shelf life of the product it's going to be packaged in so uske liye alag bio alag processing uh, go hai 
I hope that that answers your question. Yeah, very much, very much. Sorry to interrupt here. Uh, we have our next speaker is already here. Yeah. We have only six more minutes for the discussion. We will take only three more questions. First one would be from Deepak Gowda. Uh, hello, Sharad. Uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, Hi, hi. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, very honest uh, lecture on uh, biofabrication. It was really insightful. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I observed that in, in India and even in other countries, there are a lot of companies who are uh, using uh, physical processes to process yes. uh, agricultural waste. And uh, their products are already out in the market. Uh, like, you know, they're making plates, spoons yes. and everything using uh, straw and... Uh, uh, bagas and everything. So uh, my question is, uh, does uh, bio, uh, does microfabrication have any advantage over it? And uh, uh, should we just employ physical methods rather than biological methods? Excellent, to, excellent. Yeah. So like like I said, one of the major reasons for uh, uh, micro material not becoming that popular is the availability of other sustainable packaging uh, materials that you can use like you said what we are doing is bioprocessing the waste but you could also chemically process the waste to make it equally sustainable equally biodegradable without using any biological agent like a fungi in our case so right. and that's a major threat to uh, micro material industry that's why Entrepreneurs don't need to be tunnel vision. Tunnel vision yeah. is like you have seen 10 videos of Ecovative on YouTube, uh, some some movie or uh, they said you try to become the same this, right? So that, that tunnel vision is a problem and you're right. There are other sustainable materials available that can do the job just as uh, well as micro materials. Although I will say, that in terms of thermocol, when it comes to properties, the physical property of the material, micro material is the closest. You can't okay, replicate okay. that with corrugate or paper because unka weight weight hi bahut zada hota. Okay, so in certain use cases, micro yes. materials do have an advantage. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Dr. Pooja Dubey please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sharad. Uh, it was wonderful insights. Actually, I wanted to know uh, uh, which strain you are using uh, and how so, much time I'll, it takes. We, I'll, uh, I'll tell you, we use uh, four or five strains. Mm -hmm. uh, which foam like material, I use Pluroteus RNG. The king oyster is the it makes fantastic aerial mycelium. It's it's perfect for making your bacon, your alternate protein or food, mm -hmm. wale they can mm -hmm. take some pointers. Um, RNG is great. For bio, if you have to leather-like material pe kaam karna hai, or solid state fermentation, or submerge, then the Ganoderma mm -hmm. apple natum mm -hmm. has a lot of good results. The Ganoderma lucidum has a lot of good results. The Ganoderma lucidum mm -hmm. is much easily, you'll find access to it uh, much mm -hmm. easily. And uh, for for uh, your uh, packaging material, I use Tremetis Versicolor and Ganoderma Lucidum. Yeah, mainly because uh, I think Roa Biotech uh, ke presentation mein they had mentioned that the Indian climate is hotter on the hotter side. So you hmm. need trains that, that, that can survive on, in the temperature range of 25 to 35 degrees. So hmm. Lucidum, some strains of Lucidum, some strains of Prometheus and kuch kuch FOMES ke bhi karte hai, but FOMES in limited region North India mein use kar rahe ho aap to hi How many days it takes uh, to get the final product? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you How many days it takes to get the final product ready for you? Ye aapki process pe hai. Jaysay mein dhe agar bola ki aap agar primary colonization pehle se karke rakhe so second hmm. colonization se finished product ke beech mein aapka 15 se 30 din hai but agar hmm. aapne primary colonization nahi kiya hai to aapka colonize pehle bag mein colonization hoga wo kareeb kareeb 20 20 din leta hai to aap puri process dekh lo 50 din ho gaya aapka aur usse pehle design design bhi karna padta hai ki agar maan lo koi client aaya jo bolta hai ki mere ko bhaiya ye 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 is iska packaging karna hai so then hmm. i need to sit with my design team and work hmm. on 
first making a mold of this then that mold yeah. goes into making the plastic mold so yes, this yes. process itself is 3 to 4 weeks because you are going to go to a fabricator now fabricator mm-hmm. the fabricator ki machine kitni free hai us pe depend karta hai but guma phira ke what i've seen mm-hmm. is ki from first meeting to delivery of product 6 mm-hmm. mahine tak lag jate hain right right because i am st- also struggling on this molding uh, uh, part uh, and i would like to connect with yes, you if you are yes, having a team uh, for this because i am making manual molds only so it works oh, uh, like the molding problem arises and all in problem in this yes. molding and demolding is very laborsome process yes 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 ek right. banda agar karta bhi hai to din mein he can't do more than 50 60 pieces व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप thank yeah. you belster for giving me this opportunity in this stage we are i am having a biomaterial workshop uh, very soon i just wanted to take this platform to inform everybody uh, i'll be posting it about in the mycoasia group jinko interest ho biomaterial ke workshop lene mein uh, they, they they can respond to it thank you jashit uh, thank you sharad wait 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 uh, let's hear from dr rohit sharma 